Um, I have a question for Mojo, Juju and Elle Fresh. I want to know how you found your distinct style and voice having grown up in Australia and what advice you'd give someone going through something similar. How can they tap in to their creativity and stay connected to community and culture? Mm. Start with Mojo. Um, <laughs> big question. Thank you. Um, it's taken a long time to find that voice and through a lot of experimentation. But I think ultimately the thing is about authenticity. Um, you know, like I, I was saying just before the show started, I... I showed up to school, high school in my first music class with sheet music for a song that I loved and no one there, uh, you know, I was like, I was really into R&B sort of before I started high school and then when I got to high school, no one was into that. I grew up in, in Dubbo in New South Wales and it just wasn't, um, I didn't know anyone can, else. Can I interrupt you that. just for one minute? Yeah. Um, because uh, here's a quote from a speech of yours, and if you don't mind, yeah, let's read no, it out okay. and you can respond to it. So, growing up in the 80s and 90s in regional Australia, I stuck out like a steamed veggie at a Filipino barbecue. <laughs> a queer, brown, Asian kid with a name no one could pronounce, and I hit puberty at the same time Pauline Hansen became a household name. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my question, some... please explain. That... <laughs> Well, that sums it up pretty much. I think, you know, to quote myself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't easy. And, and so I did, a lot of, I did a lot of time trying to fit in. And, and through that, I kind of discovered, yeah, I do. I like some rock and I like some punk and I like, um, a, like a lot of hip hop and I like R&B and I like jazz and I like soul and I like blues. You know, I just listened to everything. And I think, you know, have acquired bits of that along the way. And so now for me, I think the, you know, all I want to do is make music that's authentic to me. The artists that have truly inspired me are the ones that transcend genre. Mm. And, um, you know, I think that goes for anyone, not just people who come from marginalised backgrounds. Anyone who's making music should make music that's authentic to them. Mm. Let me ask you just one more quick question, and that is how does that description of yourself, um, when you put it out there, how does it play when you're on tour in regional Australia? Um, sometimes it's great and sometimes it's awkward. Um, you know, I've definitely come across towns and... and shows where it hasn't been well received, like people don't know what to make of me, but then it doesn't matter if there's like one person in the audience that connects with what you're doing and they see themselves represented, then to me that's worthwhile because when I was growing up, I didn't see myself reflected on the stage or on the screen or like, you know, it was very rare to see someone um, on the television. I think that's why I kind of gravitated towards black American music was because it was something other than, you know, what the dominant kind of paradigm was. So it was like, yeah, um, to be that for someone else maybe is, I think, the most rewarding thing that I've experienced That's a in good my enough career. reason, I think. Mm. Yeah. Let me go to uh, Fresh, what do you think? And it's the same question really for you. Mm. Obviously that question was to both of you. Yeah, it's a great question and, like, there's so many different ways to kind of tackle it, I think, but... And I, and I echo a lot of what, what Mojo was just sharing then, you know, in terms of the journey towards finding your style, your sound, your voice. Um, I think, you know, the first thing that kind of comes to mind for me is, you know, music as an artist is such an introspective thing. You know, the process of writing a song means you have to look internally and you have to kind of, you know, pick your own brain and your own thoughts, feelings and emotions. And, you know, it can be such a, uh, you know, powerful process in that way. And for me, it was a process of self-discovery. I'm so grateful that I discovered hip hop because, you know, hip hop has this, this culture and this tradition of, of valuing authenticity, you know? And so it's like, if you're, you're trying to make music as a hip hop artist and you try to sound like somebody else, mm -hmm. hip hop tells you, nah, I don't want to hear you. Yeah. You know, it's like, show me something that's authentic. Show me, show me something that's you. And so when I discovered that hip hop for me was such a, a liberating space and it, it, it encouraged me to want to learn more about myself 
and wanted to learn, specifically learn more about my own cultural background, my parents' journey in, in terms of their journey of migration, but also to tap into their roots and where they came from, you know, to rediscover language, because I was fluent in, in Punjabi growing up and then lost it, you know, during teenage years and then, re, you know, wanting to relearn it, you know, and, and, and I credit hip hop in a large part for that, you know, so, you just, know. Just do, do us a favour because a lot of people will not know the derivation of your stage name, mm -hmm. L Fresh the Lion. Um, give us the breakdown. Yeah, I, I do the short story because it's like a essay version. Yeah, do the short well. one. <laughs> do the short one. Um, Big panel. Yeah, Fresh short is version. a Fresh is an acronym, so it stands for Forever Rising, Exceeding Exceeding Sudden Hardships, which is why it always appears in caps. And and that was my appropriation of a name that um, a, a classmate gave to me. As a, as a rapper in high school, he kept saying, you know, your music's fresh, it's cool. So I was like, okay, let me take it, redefine it, make it my own. So it became the acronym. And then it became L Fresh. I wanted the L to stand for Lion. Lion coming from Sikh tradition where men have the middle name or surname Singh, which translates into Lion. Women have core, which means royalty. Hmm. So I, I wanted to use that. But then I was like, at some point, hip hop is not subtle, so like no one's gonna know what the L is. So I was like, just make it El Fresh the Lion, um, and, and make it a statement. So you know, like, but as I was saying, you know, diving into music, and specifically hip hop music for me enabled me to to build confidence in myself. And so you know, now when I'm talking to to next generation artists who are coming up, whether it's kids from Western Sydney, Southwest Sydney, whatever it might be, or across the country, one thing that I try to articulate is, you know. No one wants to, 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 to see an imitation or hear an imitation. We all have our influences when it comes to music. You know, we were all mentioned some of our influences before. And inevitably, when we start making music, we're going to sound like them. But at some point, you have to, to, to look inside and, and, and look at what your story is. What do you bring to the table? And what do you want to share with the world? And how can you express it in a way that is uniquely you? And when you do that, then you represent an authentic self and you start being an imitation.